tepid, a crawl, modest. The Economist had to get out all the mild words to describe what happened in our economy in the last three months of last year. We spent more on what's called non-discretionary spending, the essential and unavoidable costs like food and energy. That cost of living pressure resulted in sensible Cosy Lives responses. We spent less on things like eating at restaurants and buying cars, and more on food to cook at home and not buying cars. We're getting deeper into a per capita recession, where the amount of economic output per person goes backwards. Although, as you can see in this graph, if you take out that COVID shock period, it's not a huge fall. And some economists think it has more impact in poorer nations that don't enjoy the kind of social safety net we have here. Our key stock market index fell on the GDP news, and then traders thought about it, and it lifted again to be basically where it closed yesterday. And don't get too shocked by the US market dropping a full percent. It's been at record highs this week. The value of our dollar lifted in trading against major currencies today, and gold remains almost as expensive as it ever has been. Bitcoin is at record highs. The cryptocurrency, which is not backed by any central bank or government, has almost doubled in value in the past month. The amount of coins that people get when they mine a block halves every four years or so, and it's likely to happen soon in what's called the halvening. And if none of that makes sense, could be why crypto is a source of such intense debate about its value and dangers. And that's finance.